Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to the iRay Super Shader in Character Creator 3. You're going to learn the basics about how it renders iClone materials like you see here, and also how to tweak and enhance those converted iRay materials to achieve the photorealistic results that you want. These are just a few examples of how you can adjust the Super Shader parameters to specific settings for a completely enhanced final render. When you use the iRay Render plugin to render any scene in Character Creator, all of the materials in Character Creator will be auto-converted into iRay IMDL materials. You can see the difference as we switch from the Materials tab of the Modify window to the Materials tab of the iRay Render window. By the end of this video, you'll learn how easy it is to enhance the visual result like in these examples for a much more realistic final render. Let's start by taking a look at the Multiplier section that allows you to strengthen the effect of your various texture maps. Pay close attention to the water sphere our sorceress here is levitating as I adjust the base color multiplier, the normal map multiplier, and finally the roughness multiplier. Notice that as we decrease each multiplier value, the effects of the corresponding texture maps become less apparent on the sphere. In the Reflectivity section, you can use the Reflectance value to enhance the appearance of reflections on objects in your scene. To complement that effect, you can use the Edge Strength slider to enhance the Angle of Incidence effect, which dictates that surfaces which are at a larger angle to our viewing position will present themselves as more reflective and opaque. The Anisotropy effect is essentially used to make the surface appear to be a bit more brushed and follow a particular stroke pattern. In this case, you can see that it distributes the reflective area into a less intense focus, and weakens the specular highlight slightly, as it's meant to be used for a more brushed metal sort of appearance. You can also change the angle of the anisotropy effect if you want the brushing pattern to appear to flow in a different direction. This can be a bit tricky with a spherical shape on occasion. Let's turn it off for now, as that's not the final look that we're going for, and take a look at the coding section now. The coating effect can be used to create a fairly transparent type of coat on the top of your object, similar to that of a varnish on a wooden surface. If I change the color and strength values on our floating sphere, you can see the purple hue that now takes over its coated surface. The edge strength slider here acts similarly to the one in the reflectivity section, making the surface coating appear thicker on the edges of the surface, while the roughness strength has the ability to simulate a rougher surface on the coated area. Let's reset all those values by using the little icon on the top right here, and then take a look at subsurface scattering and combining it with the multiplier section. Subsurface scattering is essentially how rays of light react after penetrating the surface of an object that is not completely opaque on the surface, such as water or the top layer of skin. Basically like how the light rays diffuse into the material once they hit the surface. Let's first activate subsurface scattering and go into the multiplier section to reduce the roughness map multiplier and increase the base color map multiplier to get a stronger color effect in our sphere. Let's compare a couple of before and after results from the value adjustments we've gone through so far. In this first example, you can see the effects of the character's clothing once we increase the base color map multiplier for that particular mesh. Next, we can add on a coating effect onto the chains of our character's outfit to really make them pop. Next, pay attention to the bangles on our character's arm as we apply the anisotropy effect. The reflections are now much more smoothed out along the angle that the bangles are wrapping around the character's arm. Semi-transparent surfaces like jewels and liquids are ideal for using the subsurface scattering effect. You can see a dramatic improvement to the realistic diffusion of light below the surfaces of these jewels after the subsurface scattering effect is activated. Here is a before and after comparison that shows all of those modifications together. The second image is much more enhanced than the first and exhibits more realistic light behavior as well. Let's take a look at subsurface scattering more in relation to the character's skin. We already have the subsurface scattering effect applied to the skin on the arm here, but what if we wanted to make her extended arm seem like it was absorbing more of the light source beneath the surface? If we take the scattering blend strength up slightly, it allows for more blending throughout the surface of the arm, which prepares us for the following increase in the light absorb and scatter parameter. Even a slight increase here has a significant effect on the forearm in particular. In order to strengthen or decrease this effect on particular areas of the arm mesh, you can use the Scatter Mask Map to dictate which areas of the mesh will have the strongest effect. The look of the nails can also be improved by selecting that mesh and applying the coating effect. 
As I mentioned a bit earlier, this effect can be useful for something like a way to coat or varnish on top of the object's surface. Here we're simply tweaking the strength, edge strength, and roughness values in order to achieve the beautiful nails that we want. The eyes are also an area of the character that could be enhanced by using the special physically accurate cornea checkbox in the cornea section of your character's eye mesh. By using this option, you can have the lens of your eye more accurately portray how light hitting a cornea would be refracted and viewed from a close-up distance. Finally, when it comes to parts of your character like the skin, in many cases you'll want to multiple select all the skin meshes and adjust them simultaneously, so you don't need to do them one by one. Notice that if I adjust the base color multiplier for the skin on the head by itself, only that will change and the skin on the rest of the body will remain the same. So what we'll want to do to fix that is shift select all the skin meshes that we want to change in the material list altogether, and tweak the value for all the meshes simultaneously. You can continue to go into other areas too, like subsurface scattering, and do things like adjust the base color swatch to a warmer color, and increase the compensate base color map slider in order to blend more of that chosen color into the base color map for a warmer overall skin glow. So that's a brief introduction to the iRay Super Shader plugin for Character Creator 3 and just a couple of quick samples of how you can use it to enhance your character's appearance in particular, including using techniques such as the multiplier and subsurface scattering to achieve different effects. Thanks so much for watching everyone, hopefully you learned a lot, and as always make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.